Benjamin Franklin was an outstanding statesman, inventor, writer, and scientist in American history. His life is full of colorful experiences and interesting stories, as well as many famous quotes, making him one of the legendary figures in American history. On January 17, 1706, Benjamin Franklin was born on Milk Street in Boston, Massachusetts, and was baptized at the Old South Meeting House. Benjamin's older brother was James Franklin, and he was one of the 17 children of Josiah Franklin and one of 10 children of his second wife, Abia Fuhr. His brother was James Franklin and his sister Jane. Franklin did not receive formal education when he was young, but he became a knowledgeable and talented person through extensive reading and self-study. Josiah wanted Benjamin to study theology, but he only studied for two years due to financial constraints. He attended Boston Latin School, but did not graduate, he later studied on his own. Although his parents wanted him to pursue a career in the church, Franklin dropped out of school at the age of 10. He worked for his father for a while and at the age of 12 became an apprentice to his brother James. James was a printer who introduced Franklin to the publishing industry. When he was 15 years old, James founded the New England Journal, the first completely independent newspaper in the colonies. Franklin wanted to write an article for publication, but after being rejected, he adopted the pen name of a middle-aged widow, Sirens Dagood. Mrs. Dagood's letter is published, sparking discussion in the town. Neither James nor the newspaper readers noticed the trick, and James was unhappy when it was revealed. Franklin was an advocate of free speech from an early age. In 1722, when his brother was imprisoned for three weeks for writing articles that offended the governor, Franklin Jr. took over the newspaper, under the name of Mrs. Dagood, there can be no wisdom without freedom of thought, and there can be no public liberty without freedom of speech. When he was 17 years old, Franklin ran away from home without permission. On the way, Franklin broke his vegetarian diet and ate cod. 17-year-old Franklin fled to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, wanting to start a new life in a new city. When he first arrived, he worked in several printing shops in the city but was unsatisfied. A few months later, the governor, Baron William Hughes, persuaded Franklin to go to London to obtain equipment to establish a new newspaper. While in London, Franklin noticed the idea, which was flashy, and did typesetting in a printing shop, now the Cathedral of St. Bartholomew's in Smithfield. Thomas Denham was a businessman who hired Franklin as a clerk and librarian. With his help, Franklin returned to Philadelphia in 1726. In 1727, 21-year-old Benjamin Franklin founded the Junto to organize a group of like-minded craftsmen and traders to improve themselves while improving their community. The Junto discussed current events and spawned many other organizations in Philadelphia. Gongdu Club was established after the British Coffee House, which was a center for spreading enlightenment ideas. The biggest pastime of Gongdu Club is reading, but books are expensive and scarce. Members established libraries and shared materials with each other, Franklin wrote. Since books are often referenced in our discussions, I propose that we collect some books during the gathering so that we can consult them, by raising a library, we should and like to keep them so that everyone can refer to other people's books. It can be said that everyone owns all books. This is still not enough. Franklin proposed establishing a membership library and raising funds to purchase books for reading. This led to the founding of the Philadelphia Book Company, Franklin wrote the ordinances in 1731. In 1732, Franklin hired America's first librarian, Louis Timothy. The library company is now a large academic research library. During Franklin's career, he held many important positions, 
including U.S. Ambassador to France and Speaker of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. He was also a member of the drafting committee of the American Declaration of Independence and made outstanding contributions to the cause of American independence. Interesting story. In 1746, Benjamin saw Archibald Spencer giving a lecture on static electricity and began to explore electricity. Franklin believed that the vitreous and racy noose of electricity were not different fluids the view at the time, but the same fluid was affected by different pressure independently proposed by William Watson in the same year. Franklin was the first to label them as positive and negative, discovering the law of conservation of charge. On October 19, 1752, Franklin described the experiment in the Pennsylvania Journal, but did not mention that he was the experimenter. On December 21, the report was read at the Royal Society and published in Philosophical Letters. In 1767, Joseph Priestley published details in his history and present condition of electricity. Franklin carefully stood on an insulator and took shelter from the rain under the roof to avoid being shocked. Russian professor George Richmond was fatally electrocuted while conducting a similar experiment. In the article, Franklin mentions dangers and gives measures to ensure safety, such as grounding. Franklin did not fly the kite into the sky and be struck by lightning as popular novels describe, otherwise his life would be in danger. Franklin flew a kite to collect electrical charges in the dark clouds, illustrating thunder and lightning. On October 19, Franklin wrote to Britain to repeat the experiment. When the rain wets the kite string and makes it conductive, you can find that the current flows continuously to the key next to your finger. You can use this key to charge the vial or Leyden jar. The electric sparks obtained therefrom can be used in all electrical experiments, which are usually done with the help of rubber glass domes or tubes, the sparks therefore reveal exactly the same electrical properties. Franklin's electrical experiments invented the lightning rod. He claims that the tip, which is sharp rather than rounded, allows for calm release over long distances. He speculated that installing upright iron rods, as sharp as needles, gold-plated and rust-proof, with wires connected to the bottom of the rod leading to the ground outside the building. The top of the rod would be able to quietly absorb sparks before dark clouds strike, thus protecting us from sudden and terrible injury. After conducting a series of experiments on his own house, Franklin pushed for the installation of lightning rods in Philadelphia College now Penn State and Penn Hall later Independence Hall in 1752. Franklin was also an inventor, creating such useful items as the lightning rod, the doublet spectacle, and the Franklin stove. His invention not only caused a sensation at the time, but also had a profound impact on later generations. When Franklin was a boy, African American slavery was rampant in the British colonies without any resistance. During his lifetime, there were many slaves in Philadelphia. In 1750, half of Philadelphia's property owners were slaves. 15% of urban dock workers are enslaved. Franklin owned up to seven slaves, with two men working at home and in the shop. He profited from the international and domestic slave trade and even criticized those slaves who escaped to the British Army during the War of 1740-50. However, Franklin later became a cautious abolitionist and spoke out in criticism. In 1758, Franklin initiated the opening of a school to provide education for slaves in Philadelphia. When he went to England, Franklin brought two slaves, Peter and King, with him, and King left there in 1756. In 1758, King was working for a lady of Suffolk. Under the common law system and the subsequent Chanley v. Harvey case, there was doubt as to whether Franklin could recover King, but he did not pursue it. After returning in 1762, Franklin became even more opposed to slavery. 
By 1770, he was freeing his own slaves and attacking slavery and the slave trade. However, he refused to discuss it publicly at the 1787 Constitutional Convention. He favored both sides and did not completely separate himself from slavery. In his later years, Congress was forced to discuss the issue of slavery, and Franklin issued several articles emphasizing the importance of abolition and the integration of black people into society. These articles include Letter to the Public 1789, Plan for the Improvement of Free Negroes 1789, Sidi Mahmoud Ibrahim and the Slave Trade 1790. In 1790, Quakers in New York and Pennsylvania submitted petitions to Congress to abolish slavery. They were supported by the Pennsylvania Abolitionist Society and its president, Franklin. Franklin died on April 17, 1790, and was buried with his wife in the cemetery at Christ Church in Philadelphia. Since 1928, every hundred dollar bill has been printed with Benjamin Franklin's portrait. Coupled with the importance of the US dollar as the world's main currency, Benjamin Franklin's appearance is widely familiar to many people around the world. AOL held a voting event The Greatest American in 2005, in which Franklin was selected as the fifth greatest American figure. In 1726, when Franklin was 20 years old, he tried to summarize the 13 points of morality and put them into practice in the future. In his autobiography, he listed, 1 temperance, don't eat enough and don't drink too much. 2 abbreviation, don't say anything that is harmful to others or yourself, and avoid trivial chatter. 3 order, things have their place and things have their place, and things are done on time. For determination, you must do what you have to do, and you must do what you are determined to do. 5. Frugality, spend money to benefit others and yourself, and never waste it. 6. Diligence, cherish time, spend time doing useful things, and avoid meaningless actions. 7. Honesty, avoid hypocrisy and deception, be conscientious and fair in your heart, and speak the same way. 8. Integrity, don't do things that harm others, do things that are beneficial to people. This is your obligation. 9. Moderate, don't go to extremes. If others' offenses against you are legitimate, you must be good at tolerating them. 10. Cleanliness, keep your body, clothing, and residence clean. 11. Tranquility, don't disturb yourself when dealing with trivial, ordinary, or unavoidable things. 12. Chastity, do not indulge in excessive sexual activities, which may harm your health, and do not harm your own or others' peace and reputation. 13. Humility, imitating Jesus and Socrates. Franklin did not achieve it overnight, but one thing a week. Wait until one virtue becomes a habit before practicing the next one. Franklin did not fully achieve it and often considered himself a failure, but this greatly promoted his own progress and contributed to success and happiness. Therefore, he devoted more space to studying the plan in his autobiography, writing, Therefore, I hope that some of my descendants can benefit from following the example. Through Franklin's life, we can gain many valuable life lessons. His spirit of struggle and innovation inspires us, teaching us to look for opportunities in difficult situations, strive to pursue knowledge and improve our own qualities. On the road to pursuing success, Franklin's famous sayings inspire us to cherish time, work hard, and maintain a cautious and tolerant attitude. His life not only left numerous achievements and inventions, but also set an example for future generations. In general, Benjamin Franklin's life experiences, interesting stories, and famous quotations provide us with rich inspiration and encourage us to pursue excellence, work hard, and continue to grow in the journey of life.